Hi, I'm Annabelle with Journey for Earth, and my guest today is Mark Eisenhardt, sponsored athlete, actor, and transformational speaker. Hi, Mark. It's lovely to have you on Skype today. It is. I'm glad to be here. Thanks so much. It's nice to see your face. Thanks <laughs> you for having too, me. Finally. Um, I know that you have been on quite a journey in the last few years. Would you please share with everyone um, some of the big things that you have been through in that time? Well, it's it's been quite a ride, Annabelle, and thanks for asking. Uh, it all starts with the experience of watching my dad, who is a man that I refer to as my true north. I had a wonderful relationship with him. He was an extraordinary man. We were very close. He was more than my dad. He was my best friend. So uh, the experience of watching him be cancer to die of liver disease was excruciating, and it is the hardest experience that I've ever had to endure, and it came on very quickly, and his illness was very aggressive, and it was it was uh, excruciating. I'm not going to lie. It, it, uh, it's the hardest thing I've ever endured, and at that time, I was already very much in a dark place in my life, a dark night of the soul, if you will, and doing a bang-up job of um, killing myself. Uh, I want to go on record as saying that back then, I was the poster child for post-traumatic stress disorder. I'm a retired twice decorated firefighter paramedic. I worked with the largest fire protection district in the state of Oregon and I had a wonderful career and I was decorated with the medal of valor and a community service award for heroism. But, um, that career and all the other things that were going on with me at that time, um, and what followed, uh, soon after that, it piled up and it sunk its teeth into me and it, it took a, a big chunk out of me. So, um, after my dad's death, um, I landed squarely at death's door, and that what followed in the year after that changed me, literally turned me into a new man, a, a life-changing transformation. So that's kind of where that whole trajectory started. Um, so what I mean by that is at the time of my rock bottoms landing at death's door, I weighed 455 pounds. I had diabetes and all the comorbidity that you'd expect to go along with it. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, anxiety, and eating disorder. And in the last lucid conversation that I had with my dad on his deathbed, I made him a promise. I made myself a promise. I said that I wasn't going to live this way anymore. I was going to lose the weight. I was going to do it for good. I was going to do it in a way that was sustainable. I was going to eradicate the diseases and restore myself to the kind of vibrant health that I enjoyed during my prime. And I was going to be the man that he had raised me to be, uh, uh, what I refer to as my true and authentic self. I was going to create the life that I had always known was possible. And I was hugely successful by that metric. In one year without surgery, I dropped 215 pounds from 455 down to 240. I reversed the diabetes. I eradicated the comorbidity. 90% um, loss of feeling in both feet from diabetic neuropathy restored to 100% feeling in, in both feet. I had a 25% loss of hearing in my left ear, a 15% loss in my right, restored to 100% hearing in both ears. Um, I healed in at a rate of return that's nothing short of miraculous. And what um, that is miraculous. I mean, that's amazing. Um, and what it's what happens when you make something more important than anything else in your full time job? <laughs> right, I get yeah. that. And then, yeah. so how do you apply that though? How did you apply that on a daily basis? You know, what motivates you, and where did you get that mindset from that you continue to do that, whatever? Well, it was a steep learning curve, and it was a process of trial and error, and. Um, frankly, I'm a, I'm a person who is a big believer in the law of attraction and the power of intention. So once I put that intention out there, the universe started conspiring to help me create that and to help that manifest. And so I created an immersion program to augment the hospitalization program that I was involved in, or rather enrolled in, because I was in a partial hospitalization program for some time. And prior to that, I was admitted for some time. But the core tenets of my program included meditation, um, developing a healthy mindset, using positive affirmations, visualization techniques, um, what most people would categorize as alternative medicine or holistic health medicine. So energy work, Reiki, craniosacral therapy, emotional freedom technique. 
obviously lifestyle changes and drastic changes in my diet. I uh, transitioned to a plant-based whole foods diet from the standard American diet and then eventually went raw vegan. And when I went raw vegan, the weight just started falling off of me. And there were days when I struggled. There were days when I was ready to throw in the towel. And I consulted experts. I talked to coaches and trainers and therapists and um, people who had also experienced profound transformations themselves. And um, But I got through it and I fell back on mostly that promise that I made to my dad because understand that my dad did not let me down one time in 40 years. If that man said he was going to be somewhere, he was there. If he said he was going to do something, he did it. And I sure as heck was not going to let him down. So that was all the motivation that I needed, that promise I made to him in the last lucid conversation I had on his deathbed. Um, that's really beautifully said. That's very touching. I'm <laughs> like holding back tears here. Um <laughs> And do you, do you find yourself though since, you know, over this period of time and right now in this moment, do you feel you're dealing with challenges and setbacks differently? Do you find your, you know, you tackle them differently, you overcome them more quickly? I do. I've developed a, a totally different, not only view of myself, but model of the world, a different skill set for dealing with adversity, dealing with setbacks, because I have dealt with many of them and still do struggle with things. I definitely um, have a completely and totally different way of being and way of thinking. But the good news is that I have better coping mechanisms. I have better um, ways to manage stress and different ways to view uh, setbacks and, and a, a totally different set of tools in my tool box, toolbox. And I do still struggle and let me go on record as saying that I'm in the process right now of a second transformation not to eradicate disease or to reverse diabetes but in order to advance my career especially as an actor and as a sponsored athlete I'm going to drop down to 210 pounds and 7% body fat and let me tell you something that's no small task I'm a huge man I'm, I'm a man who's been in excellent shape at different times in my life and played semi-pro football and played in college and you know I've done some you incredibly athletic things, solo climbs of many of the Cascade Volcanoes, but this is uh, this is a Herculean endeavor, and it's very difficult, and I still struggle with it, and the nice thing is I have an expert team to help me uh, with, with the process. You can learn more about some of the members uh, of my team on my website, but I have a totally different way of dealing with it, and I, I realize that what served me so well during that initial year-long transformation, this is applicable to every aspect of my life, to my career, to the quality of relationships, to, um, you know, my, my goals and to everything that's, you know, who I am now. It, it, all, it all rolls over. It all converts for certain. For sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and your, your story, isn't it true, is being adapted for the screen by the Synergy it TV is. Network? It is, How yes. Thank you for asking. Actually, we had a really important meeting on Monday uh, production meeting as to how best to serve that end. We're leaning towards it being a docu-series now. So the Synergy TV Network is a uh, web-based, on-demand platform that streams everything from film shorts to series to feature-length films. And so there'll be postings on my website and on social media and my blog about that, but know that we're going to start filming in September at a minimum for a documentary film and most likely a docu-series. And so there'll be some backstory, there'll be some content about what I've come through up to this point, um, and then there'll be ongoing content about what I'm going through, not only in terms of transformation, but the career trajectory that I'm on, um, the uh, lifestyle. There's some obviously some very important um, threads in here about green living, about conscious living, about sustainability, uh, about the environment. These are all extensions of who I am and my brand. So that's all going to be captured uh, within the context of that. And you're um, you're also a big advocate, I believe, for the humane treatment of animals. I am, yes. And the preservation of endangered species. So how did you how did you get to that point where you felt so passionate about it and have you spoken public publicly about it too I have spoken a little bit um, in some of the interviews that I've done on television and radio and in some of my speaking gigs. So you're going to see a new surge here, especially um, after the first of the year. I'm going to be doing a lot more speaking events in person, um, but also using this um, experience with the docuseries and the traction that it gives me to launch um, with, with you know full intention, full throttle forward, a, a separate sort of side thread for my career and as a advocate for the humane treatment of animals, for cruelty treatment, uh, treatment of animals, and for endangered species. I've actually been this way my whole life. I've had a 
vested interest in it, and I followed things unfold, and, and you know, I did little things where I could, like I was a volunteer for the uh, Humane Society, but this is a subject that cannot be ignored. This is a subject that needs to be in the forefront of the consciousness of everyone on this planet, because this is very near and dear to my heart, and it's something that has to be addressed. We have, we're all so busy, we have 6.8 million people deciding what's important to them and, and deciding how to prioritize things in their lives, and I get that, I understand that, but if we don't give this our due diligence, none of that other stuff is going to matter. We have one planet, it's that simple, and we need to do a better job of taking care of her, or none of the other stuff is going to matter. No, I agree, and that's well said, Ma, thank you, and what do you, what do you think some of the things that people can do? Um, I mean, what, is, what are some of the ideas you have that we can all help preserve our planet for future generations? Well, I think, I think one of the things that we need to all start with is the mindset, right? Um, everybody seems to have enrolled very readily in the idea of thinking globally, so I want to invite them to think universally. Think outside the, don't think outside the box, think off planet, think bigger. <laughs> I mean it, seriously. Like it's a question <laughs> scale. Think off planet. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would like to encourage people to do is use this as a call to action to expanding their mindset mm -hmm. and expanding their consciousness around that. And then, so maybe start locally um, because at, to some extent there's a there's a practical side of this. And, and the nice thing is, I mean, if you look very closely at just something as an aside, it takes the average person 15 seconds to pick up three pieces of trash, right? Now, we have 6.8 billion people on the planet. If everybody did that at 15 seconds a day, every day for one week, seven days, that would be, let's see, 777 times five. That's 105 um, seconds they would spend in a week picking up three pieces of trash times 6.8 billion people. This planet's surface would look totally different after one week. And, and they spent 15 seconds a day. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for taking the time to talk with me. And for those of you who'd like to know more about Mark and his amazing work and to be part of all the inspiration, please go to getempowerednow.com. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Annabelle, for having me on the show. And I guess I'll just close with um, the, uh, the idea of being a catalyst for change. It means different things to different people. It's a phrase that kind of has a nebulous meaning I know what it means to me, and I don't want to be remembered as um, the guy who just had this profound, sensational weight loss story and then slipped through the cracks. I don't want to be remembered as the guy who rattled the cages or the guy, who's, guy who tore them down. I want to be the guy who be remembered as the guy who proved they never existed in the first place. That's how I think I can impact the most people. Uh, most people's lives. I'm quoting my book, by the way, but that's where I see Catalyst for Change. That's what that means to me. I love that. Thank you, Mark. Very powerful closing statement. Thank you. Thanks Thank for having you. me here. And <laughs> everyone watching, get Mark's book when it comes out. <laughs> yeah, right? Thank you. And please support Journey for Earth in any way that you can, <laughs> or better yet, every way that you can, because we need to join forces. We'll accomplish so much more, more working together. So thank you, Annabelle, for the work you're doing, and I applaud Journey for Earth, and I look forward to seeing what happens next. Maybe some creative synergy in the future. That'd be nice, right? <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.